we have the ranged weapons out of the way, I'm going to show you all of the um, Trouble Valley melee weapons, along with the one explosive, the Wilkerson's Batch 11. What's strange is on State of Decay's 2 site, and I will show it here, they only show that you can get a Dino Jaw Blade, Eli's, Eli's Mighty Socket Wrench, and the Souvenir uh, Caveman Club, along with uh, Wilkerson Special Reserve. It does not tell you about three other weapons, which I will show you. And also, one of the weapons are fresh community only. Kind of like this one here is a good example. In this medical uh, center here, where I am in the Oasis, in the back of this store is this bat red bag. That, the first time you come here, that has the scorpion ranged weapon in it. Um, but if you switch maps, if you switch difficulty, that never goes back if you're using the same community that's done the storyline. So it's basically a fresh community item. There's no other way to get it. Um, that one you could at least get from a trader. So it's not too bad. But the Dino Jawblade is a one-time thing, fresh community only. We're going to go straight there. Um, actually, we're going to stop here first. We're going to make a couple of stops. So I can show you a couple of things along the way. Now, the, the Mickey Wilkerson uh, storyline has a couple of weapons and things that are specific to him. So if you don't do that storyline, um, you're not going to get access to these things. So it'd be in your best interest, we shall say, to do his storyline. That's why there's achievements. There's an achievement built around his storyline. Uh, he's, he's probably the most important one to do if you want to get anywhere <laughs> in the story because he is pretty much tied to all of the other characters that are part of the story and helps keep the, the missions progressing. I'm still getting used to this path because it's just like craziness. But I'm going to show you two things that are specific to him. There's actually three. The other weapon, the melee weapon, uh, the ranged weapon I showed, the Model 92, you cannot get without also doing his storyline. So that's three things. The other two are the Eli's Mighty Socket Wrench and the Wilkerson's 11. Uh, the Eli's Mighty Socket Wrench is also a one-time thing. You can switch the map or difficulty as many times as you want, you will never get another one uh, once you've completed his storyline. That's it. You'd have to start a new community and um, go through his storyline again to get it. Even if you know where it is on the map, it will not be searchable. I'm going to show you where it is on the map. But the only good thing um, that he does provide when you finish his storyline, and you'll see here, is you can buy the Batch 11 from him. Now, the Batch 11 is, is a very strong fire uh, type explosive. It's stronger than a fuel barrel. I found it's very deadly on hostiles. It's very, very good on hostiles. A lot of times you can hit them with one and then just pop them a couple of times with any gun and they're done on any level, lethal even. So that's how strong the Batch 11 is. But once you get him that storyline progressed or finished, he will always be in the old church from State of Decay 1. And in here, he will always sell Batch 11. So if you trade with him, and of course he doesn't have it right now. Well, he does, he will sell. He will, I hate when they do this. I'll show you what they are. But he will sell them. He just doesn't, for whatever reason, he drank them all today. I don't know. But this is where you would go back to get more Batch 11, because there's no other way. You can't make them anything else. So part of his storyline is going to this next location here, where Eli's Mighty uh, Socket Wrench is. It's not far from here. And again, it's a one-time thing unless you start a fresh community and his storyline over again. So it's something you don't want to miss. And it, he doesn't exactly lead you there. 
he actually gives you a hint that there may be um, a shortcut and if you follow that shortcut then then it can trigger the event of finding a stash it's not the normal two stashes that he has another mission about finding stashes for him it's not that mission it's a whole it's one of the earlier missions and he tells you to take a shortcut and if you do take the shortcut then he remembers where Eli's mighty socket wrench is and he tells you to go to the location I'm going to right now I've switched this map a couple of times even the difficulty doesn't matter this is just not coming it's just not coming back but right back here where this tractor is basically on the map here of course there's a juggernaut coming right back here like these two it's like a storm uh, shutter here and this toolbox right here I'm standing next to will be searchable and in there will be this weapon Eli's let's get it in the light mighty socket wrench which is a very huge wrench and as you can see here the durability is the best thing about it I mean the ease of use and speed are also very good um, impact is not bad for a wrench Eli was I think uh, one of Mickey's brothers but if you compare it to as I have already here the pipe wrench pipe threader which is the exact same model it's better but n not much you know this weighs more it's eight pounds the pipe threader is five and you lose a little bit of easy use and durability but it, it's the same weapon it's the same well, you know see what I'm saying it's the same thing so you're not missing out too much on this weapon but it is here and it is in this toolbox right there but again you have to do the mickey storyline to get it and once you get it you can't reset the map or any of those tricks don't work it will not come back you have to redo the storyline moving on the next weapon this one also is another one-time thing you get it and then um if you want another one you have to restart a fresh community there's no other way to get another one and it is located in the old jurassic junction all right so here we are at the old jurassic junction from here you want to enter and the bronto gas station you don't want to climb up the front of the gas station you want to go to the back of the gas station right here climb this ladder and as soon as you get to the top, you're going to see this, this body here. On the body, or I would say sticking out of the body, is going to be this. The Dino Jaw Blade. Looks very cool. It is light. Um, the best thing about it is the speed, but the ease of use is not. So I, I don't know why they would make something with speed, but the ease of, I, those two things to me go together. Quiet. It's pretty lethal, the impact is pretty good, but it doesn't have any dismember or knockdown, which is crazy. Um, now, comparing that with a high angle rescue axe, which is one of the higher rated weapons from the critical response pack, just, just as an example, it basically destroys this weapon in every, every way, aside from looks. This is four pounds, so it does have that going for it. This is only six. As you can see, again, other than the looks, it's not that great of a weapon. It's just not. But it's a one-time thing, and it can only be gotten here. Moving on. Now, the Souvenir Caveman Club, you can get from any rare weapons cache, any crate, for that matter uh, could possibly have it but you can also get it from Jurassic Junction 2 which is right here right down the street Paradactyl Park Park um, once you take that over there are some things to clear out some debris one of them gives you a shirt the other one gives you the caveman club but again it can be found in rare weapons crates and I will show you that here now the caveman club is a heavy weapon looks pretty cool as you can see here and the stats 
Super high uh, durability. It's not that heavy for a heavy weapon. It's only 13 pounds, and the impact is good. The knockdown is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. So we're going to put it up against just the drive shaft club. Actually, it's not better than drive than the... Uh, um, if I switch it to that, yeah, it is. So you'll get better durability, knockdown, and speed. So those are actually good. The only thing that's not good is losing some impact. But that's just the basic drive shaft club that you can find. You can see it's 15 pounds. Caveman Club is 13. Is um, 13. Looks cool. Nothing that great. But it's the first of two heavy weapons. The other heavy weapon that is a secret heavy weapon is what I like. This one is called the Cannibal. I'm pretty sure that's, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Now, the Cannibal is also a heavy weapon, 14 pounds, but the impact, durability, knockdown, pretty high. Ease of use, speed, not so much, but it looks awesome. This is found in Plague Hearts. Killing a Plague Heart, you have a chance of finding this up against the Drive Shaft Club. It's not as durable, and the knockdown's a little bit. Caveman Club, again, if you switch it, it has, the Cannibal has the highest impact and knockdown, which are important for attacking Plague Heart. So for Plague Heart destruction, I think the Cannibal looks the coolest and will take out Plague Hearts much better. And again, it's a secret one. It's not even listed on State of Decay to site, but you can find this in a dead Plague Heart after you kill it. Another weapon you can find in a Plague Heart not mentioned, there is a close combat weapon. It is this. It is the Lathe Chisel. It seems from Mickey Wilkerson. Again, it's just a close combat weapon. It's a skin, but it does look pretty cool. As you can see here, I'll try to get some shots of it. Just like, it's just a Lathe Chisel, but it is something they snuck in there and they didn't say you can find it in a play card. And these are the um, explosives you get from Wilkerson. They can be bought from him. He didn't have them when we checked, but they can be bought from him when you complete his storyline as well. So you can constantly get them. You can't make them, but they can be bought. And you, I'll throw one here. And they have like a fuse on them, but they're very, very deadly. By far the rarest, by far the coolest. This is the secret Gladius. You can see here, the sword is legendary. It's just like the one guy that used in that movie, Gladiator. Paid to play, what was the movie called? But you can see, look at the speed, look at the ease of use, the lethality, dismember, quietness, knockdown, don't need that, impact, don't need that for a sword. Durability could be, is the only thing that's the knock on this. But this sword looks awesome and it shreds. Shreds. We will put it up against some of the big boy bladed. So against the um, Pathfinder. You can see the Pathfinder, obviously the durability. You get a little bit of speed and a little bit of easy use. But the lethality, you lose half of it. Razor Bite Axe. Again, dismember is very good in durability. But lethality, you lose half. Ice Pick Axe. Close, but the dismember, you lose more than half. And the high angle axe, even this, can, is not as lethal as the um, Gladius. Dismember is great, but lethality is what kills. Now let's put this guy to work. Just so I can show you how lethal this blade truly is. And that's it. That is all of the melee weapons... This one, by far, like I said, is the hardest to find. Head right off. One shot. That wasn't even a, a hard shot. Decapitated him. And again, it you may get unlucky like I did. And not get the sword. I Like I said, I had to kill 60 plus plague hearts to get this thing. But it's just... 
destroyer. Again, it's like either the first or the second shot head off. Even that, what was that, four shots on a helmeted? Let me get, let's get this group here. And it's super fast. Like, I'm telling you, this thing is a horde killer. Look at this. Like, every single one headshot. This sword is the, is the greatest. I'm telling you it's the greatest. If you're lucky enough to find it. But this is the rarest of the weapons to find. Like I said, it's not even mentioned. It is the Gladius sword. Super lightweight. Super deadly. It's like the Bastard of uh, Blaywood blade, but better. Love this sword. Uh, took a long time to get it. Well worth it. And that's it.